uh, a very uh, happy uh, morning and happy afternoon, happy evening to all my good friends there. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Akshay Panigrahi. I represent the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Central Institute of Brachyswater Aquaculture, Chennai, India. And uh, today I'll be talking on the best farming practices key to a more resilient shrimp industry in India. So if you see the uh, historical perspective, Indian uh, shrimp aquaculture from uh, 1980s, we have started the scientific shrimp farming. In that, we know we have lots of ups and downs, but uh, in that process, we are also giving, uh, contributing highly towards uh, the uh, food security of the globe. And you know the uh, uh, difficulties uh, with this, uh, all our intention is to provide the quality protein to the uh, deprived uh, population. And this is uh, uh, with uh, that, uh, uh, when we think of uh, this uh, shrimp aquaculture, the biggest challenge uh, have been the inconsistency in the uh, production or unpredictability and uh, also the vulnerability for the diseases and uh, uh, the uh, other uh, problems like which is coming up like climate change and uh, other things but india aquaculture scenario in india if you see that's a beautiful story when you think of uh, from last uh, 1950, uh, we have tremendously increased the total fish production has gone up to 12 million metric ton. And uh, from, uh, they say from sheep to mouth to chronic energy deficit to now food bill we have to provide everybody, uh, every single person uh, food. And we are the second largest agrarian economy in the world. The uh, fish uh, aquaculture growth is almost six to seven percent per year for the last 30 years consistently. And uh, the uh, export, seafood export, it reached uh, a level of uh, $7 billion. And this, uh, while uh, uh, considering this uh, shrimp aquaculture growth, we know how uh, with our native species, uh, Pinus monodon and uh, uh, indicus and uh, so, uh, we had uh, some problem with the virus and uh, WSSV and uh, other problems. So up to 2007-8, we had uh, uh, the production maximum uh, reaching up to uh, 1 lakh, uh, 61 lakh 70 thousand metric ton. But after the introduction of uh, at that point in 2009-10, we have introduced uh, this uh, uh, Venamai, the SPF Venamai uh, stream. And after that, we have never looked back. India is uh, on a very strong path, and if you see, there is uh, almost five, uh, uh, yeah, 25 fold increase uh, in the production uh, from 2089-90 to 1920. Uh, but after the introduction, if you see, there is a multi fold increase, and uh, but just the last year we had a little little reduction in the production, around 19 percent uh, reduction in the production. One reason is, of course, the COVID-19, the pandemic. And the other thing is uh, the disease uh, uh, prevalence, like uh, the WSSV, the EHP, the microsporidian parasite, and the white fecal disease, the running mortality syndrome. And another thing which we observe is uh, the low survival with the increasing days of culture. So uh, this uh, uh, disease is, you know, it's a global challenge. And if you uh, see uh, uh, globally also, there is almost like 45 billion dollar loss for the last decade and uh, recently we have published uh, our uh, indian uh, uh, context uh, what is the loss due to disease and the major uh, the overall uh, probability of uh, infectious diseases is around 49 percent leading to a loss of uh, 1.4 lakh tons of shrimp which is worth uh, nearly 1.02 billion dollar and it is around uh, 7140 crore rupees and uh, this is uh, WSSB is the major uh, uh, probability of infectious disease in that WSSB comes number one, 
but uh, the EHP uh, with 17 percent probability, the loss due to EHP is around 3,977 uh, crore rupees, and the employment loss alone is 1.6 million man days. And this is recently published in our aquaculture journal. So what is the way out? What is the uh, future? When we are looking for uh, the future, we know uh, we have to stress upon major uh, uh, three things other than the uh, new normal, the COVID situation and uh, the way uh, things are going. It is uh, again adding to our uh, uh, unpredictability. But uh, what we need is a genetic uh, improvement program. And in that, uh, you know how we have contributed after the introduction of the SPF Venamai, how the production have raised and how it has gone up. Uh, there is uh, uh, nothing to tell more about that than the biosecurity and the be better management practices. This is what is uh, contributing and uh, to the uh, the the growth uh, pathway of uh, this Venamai uh, story. And now in India, we have also introduced uh, the SPF uh, monodon. There are already two uh, group of uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, production centers have come up with uh, monodon. SPF is available to our farmers and we are looking forward to a very bright future with monodon with our brand uh, uh, shrimp as monodon. Then another aspect is the eco based evolving technologies. Uh, now the futuristic technology, whatever is uh, coming with uh, what we call uh, intensification or sustainable intensification. We are uh, looking forward for that and the issues uh, which are uh, to be addressed more for when we think of uh, resilient uh, uh, shrimp industry is uh, a regulated expansion. Definitely there we are up for expansion. We are thinking of doubling our production and export up to 100,000 uh, uh, crore rupees. And then here, uh, when we uh, think of uh, farm level, the issues are the quality seed, the bet better management practices are good aquaculture practices, then effective disease surveillance. We have already have one surveillance program existing in India and how to contain the uh, disease outbreak. Then diversification of the species, as, as you know, the uh, natural, the native species, we are thinking of uh, uh, these uh, uh, Pinus indicus, Pinus monodon, and so also different fish species, uh, this lettuce calcarifer and uh, chanos chanos, uh, other varieties. Then in India, we are also uh, making our lean, land lease policy uniform. Then there is uh, energy cost, which is should be affordable and uniform and uh, the credit and insurance facilities. So these are the issues. And when we talk of uh, resilient aquaculture, then uh, we, we are just uh, uh, thinking that time how uh, this uh, innovative aquaculture production and management and the practices, which is uh, again, we are uh, mostly dependent on the innovative climate smart aquaculture practices that we are giving emphasis upon. Then resilience of uh, aquaculture system in that the aqua insurance. We are all uh, the other day we have one uh, very ambitious uh, uh, program, Prime Minister's Masya Sampada Yojana, by which uh, we are trying to connect with all the farmers. And under that scheme, we are very much uh, developing the uh, shrimp aquaculture insurance for that and uh, the disaster and climate change adaptation for resilience. You know, always there is a, a disaster management uh, committee and disaster management aspect in every uh, local body also, but uh, somehow the shrimp aquaculture, the problem with this uh, is uh, not been taken uh, seriously. So uh, that is uh, uh, to be uh, definitely uh, taken into account. Then gender sensitivity and aquaculture value chain in that the enhancing uh, the women's uh, role, responsible production and sustainable growth. Then other aspect is the governance, the improvement in the aquaculture governance in that uh, the uh, strengthening the aquaculture planning and management tool, the aquaculture regulations. We have one coastal aquaculture authority who is responsible for all kind of policy decision and complete regulation of all our hatcheries and all these uh, is starting from uh, use of antibiotics uh, to the farm uh, permission for the uh, doing uh, this uh, SPF variety of uh, shrimp and then supporting aquaculture resource mapping and development of uh, ICT based uh, uh, solutions policy reform in uh, combating the uh, illegal unreported uh, unregulated fishing and uh, promoting the ecosystem approach to fisheries. This is again another important aspect. 
So how to move about for the uh, for the resilience or for the successful stream farming there? The first thing comes is the improved stock. Now we know now all this uh, we are importing entire uh, all our majority of the SPF uh, variety of uh, Venamai we are importing and uh, all this now growth line, the uh, the resistant line, the tolerance line and we are more concerned or more interested to get uh, the tolerance line in the line of the uh, South American countries and uh, try, to try to develop uh, far better than what we have now. And then the next one is good pond preparation. This is the aspect which uh, changes every very upon with the emerging uh, different emerging diseases and different things it is uh, changing. Then the biosecurity, comprehensive biosecurity with uh, uh, exact the the minimum cost we need that. Then multi-stage farming. We are introducing the nursery at many many farmers. Uh, uh, they are looking for the bioflock or the normal conventional nursery. And different depending uh, on that, the multi-stage farming is getting a very good welcoming uh, reception in India. Use of uh, the functional feed and uh, the uh, the cropping pattern for the entire uh, uh, different uh, northern and uh, the southern part of India. The central drainage uh, or the removal of the sloughs, how to manage the sloughs is one of the important thing. Then water quality and feed management, as you know, these are the most important aspect other than the animal health and uh, uh, interaction with the uh, farmers and professionals. So when we think of uh, genetics for improving trade here, the uh, the common uh, traits are, you know, the growth, disease resistant, high stocking density, then uh, uh, the unconsciously we also look for early maturation, uh, the spawning uh, without ablation and uh, the adaptation to local culture condition. And what is possible is uh, to improve the FCR, uh, the uh, tail body ratio, the uh, the tolerance and uh, so on and so forth. The biosecurity uh, recommendation uh, from pathogen point of view, what we are uh, looking for that we have the majority problem with the EHP and WSSP and uh, they are the uh, the how the uh, the quality seed. It should be the seed should be the the post larvae should be uh, clear from any kind of uh, diseases. Uh, so that's why we make it mandatory before uh, a sale. They, there should be a proper uh, screening, PCR screening for all these uh, important uh, diseases. And then uh, we know this uh, how this WSSB also is more uh, frequent with the uh, impure quality seed or low temperature or uh, there is breach of biosecurity or fluctuation. So also for ESP, we have established uh, our uh, different uh, uh, studies uh, by the scientific group. Also, our uh, Society for Aquaculture Professors, they were so active in uh, in analyzing the uh, all across India how this uh, uh, disease uh, ESP and how to contain that one. Here, there we find a very good uh, relation with the high temperature, with low oxygen and ESP, and uh, and of course with the poor uh, pond preparation and seed quality. And so also the we, we are fortunately we don't have the HPND or early mortality uh, disease we don't have here and uh, the other thing like IHHNB, IMNB these are all the uh, are there and last year we had a uh, big uh, a setback uh, because of the uh, lot of uh, farms were suffered because of the IMNB uh, problem. And uh, of course, this viral disease, uh, whatever we have, and uh, only prevention is the effective measures. And uh, one of the major aspect comes here is biosecurity. The biosecurity, you know, the filtration of water to chlorination to peripheral fencing, uh, the barred fencing, and all these things uh, is, is a common practice we do. And uh, the uh, the cost effective, comprehensive biosecurity. When we talk, we are uh, starting from the broodstock, the SPA for SPT broodstock or the uh, the diagnostics required uh, for uh, and the targeted surveillance and the uh, routine health monitoring and avoiding uh, the human uh, causes and uh, the emergency response so all these things are uh, also should be cost effective as we found it's only within 20 rupees uh, per kg of shrimp we need to spend and other than that, what we started in the uh, long back in 2000, 2003, 2004 with uh, NACA and uh, Indian uh, uh, counterpart and Indian organizations, we started uh, a massive survey to define the uh, the BMP, the uh, better management practices for this team, starting from all these aspects which we covered. So these are all uh, taken to the farmers uh, through different uh, associations, uh, different uh, cluster approach by which uh, we know the uh, everywhere they know farmers are sensitized uh, what is the importance and how they should remove the black soil why they should have a 
proper uh, water quality and uh, proper water depth and uh, and uh, this uh, monitoring of the disease uh, feeding management all these things are uh, taken into account but it's a dynamic process as you know this is uh, uh, as and uh, when every six month or every one year we are facing uh, a different kind of problem and 2015-16 uh, there was a different problem 2016-17 we have a lot of this ESP uh, occurrence for which uh, the pond preparation entire thing has uh, gone again uh, uh, different approach uh, to uh, change the pH oscillate the pH with uh, sodium hydroxide or calcium oxide heavy dose of calcium oxide or by acidifying that uh, any bottom with uh, uh, chlorine uh, liquid chlorine acidified chlorine and then the water treatment what we are looking is uh, potassium permanganate or uh, pack the poly aluminum chloride for uh, removing all the, uh, the all these at level uh, solids and all those things are becoming a common practice with the farmers and uh, uh, so with that uh, only uh, people are trying to get success and also the quality of the seed we know the quality of the seed uh, which is uh, very important and the the practice of uh, selling very very uh, young uh, pl 5 6 we always uh, advise not to do that pl 10 when uh, at least 250 numbers per gram and the vibrio count is becoming a major important thing in the uh, in the pl it should be uh, less than uh, 10 to the power 3 green colony per gram of uh, uh, pl and uh, this is the with the developed gill and uh, free from fouling and the stress test which is a very common practice with the farmers they practice and uh, uh, before taking to their this one and then survival uh, uh, they can have uh, some survival uh, uh, hapa where they put the seed and count and this one then uh, coming to the energy management we know how important is uh, the oxygen uh, requirement in this one reduce uh, do user uh, growth that is plankton organic matter then uh, proper aeration system uh, is always should be there and uh, continuous uh, monitoring of these devices and uh, this thing and uh, this is also is equally important is our feeding quality and regime the uh, feeding you know the underfeeding or overfeeding is always uh, uh, very very bad and overfeeding is again a one step further it may deteriorate the water quality and this one so there is whenever there is uh, a excess of feeding uh, and we we can know that from the uh, water quality from the ammonia nitrate or hydrogen sulfide buildup we immediately we advise the far the farmers have to reduce the uh, 60 to 70 percent of the feed when there is a plankton cross again you reduce the feed and for each degree reduction in the temperature 10 percent reduction of uh, the feed uh, uh, quantity and when in the winter we have a reduction of uh, six seven degree definitely a lot have to be reduced and there is an issue of dissolved oxygen then you have to uh, reduce the feeding then the uh, the weather change and all these things should be feeding uh, regulated feeding should be appropriate feeding should be a uh, regime should be followed and uh, like like that uh, so many aspects uh, you take for example this rainfall it's a, such a small uh, uh, event uh, during the rainy season we have a heavy uh, rainy season in some part of india where it is a fluctuation of the uh, salinity ph which always uh, give rise to some plankton cross or some uh, difficult bloom dinoflagellates and uh, other things uh, coming so this is this gives uh, stress to the animal and whenever uh, uh, there are uh, certain measures like the alkalinity is drop means you need uh, attention you need to uh, ph is drop means you need to lime in uh, the pond and uh, the fermented rice bran and probiotics uh, is uh, advised uh, to use and uh, uh, whenever there is uh, uh, the reduction in the temperature during the rainy season there is definitely need to cut down the feed and uh, so uh, the aeration should not be uh, stopped also during that time so then uh, the other classical approach uh, of the disease management here the major thing which we uh, look for is the environment and the pathogen its uh, virulence and uh, quantity and uh, then the stream how they are resistant or genetics is also important and the transmission of pathogen uh, uh, how it is to be curbed uh, that is uh, and the diagnostic method to be followed on farm the farmers are able to afford to uh, uh, check uh, the pathogens and uh, accordingly disinfect or decide their disinfection uh, uh, quantity and uh, quality and depending on the area where they are going to stock they are choosing 
between the growth line or the resistant line and these are the new development recently only people are knowing all these lines are possible and depending on the water quality you have to choose the variety uh, or the genetic uh, line you want to uh, stock for that then healthcare product there is zero tolerance for antibiotics uh, everywhere in uh, the hd in the production system so what we need whatever uh, uh, the uh, things are required it should be used uh, judiciously and uh, with thorough knowledge of the doses and the time result uh, should be there then there is the immunity immunity of the animal we know there is uh, always it is compromised in the uh, when the oxygen level is low when the pond bottom is with organic uh, deposit and uh, when there is any kind of stress because of the environmental parameter change so the uh, even the spike of uh, the total ammonical nitrogen or this one can be managed with uh, cn ratio manipulation so there is uh, some study we also conduct on uh, metagenomics and uh, to relate uh, with the immunity with the gut micro microbiome and uh, now this is also the pathobiome changed uh, uh, is understanding of the pathogenesis and so all these approach uh, our uh, we are uh, looking at uh, how to define and how to improve the the loss of uh, immunity how to uh, address that problem then we have a beautiful uh, in india all across the, the national surveillance program on aquatic animal diseases uh, that is uh, being uh, followed in 20 states in the union territories and uh, uh, so there uh, our uh, labs uh, this uh, cfa ciba and uh, nbfgr are they are there the referral laboratories and uh, we are able to guess what is the disease and uh, suppose this uh, white fecal uh, syndrome when it comes what is the uh, symptom and uh, where we are finding more uh, of this white fecal with hypoxic stress or plankton crash or high temperature and salinity and high organic uh, load so this is <clears throat> what can be addressed by proper pond preparation and uh, proper uh, using the clean uh, seed uh, from the hcds and proper biosecurity and bmps so what we uh, always uh, foresee is uh, we have to treat the root cause of the disease it is not that exactly uh, after the disease come we just uh, go for uh, some kind of measures and then improve the water quality and health uh, improvement is another important uh, aspect uh, through the uh, vitamin and uh, protein uh, protein mineral and immuno stimulant application now looking uh, for the uh, entire picture of uh, uh, india always there is uh, a, we have the native species which are also equally potential in their uh, growth uh, and uh, immunity and their uh, uh, so we are looking for the selective breeding of these species especially for uh, pinus indicus it is our indian species where uh, is a lot of scope lies and we are looking for that uh, uh, the uh, the indicus uh, selective breeding program and uh, morguensis and uh, other japonicus also are being cultured in some part of india and there is definitely a concerted effort is required to uh, increase the, uh, the the stock potential of this thing so that it can be adapted other than that we have as alternative uh, to this uh, fish as uh, we have uh, standardized the asian sea fish sea bass hatchery seed production and the culture the milk fish breeding all these thing uh, and the gray mullet breeding recently uh, we have obtained successfully in india in our institute icr siba this uh, milk fish uh, breeding uh, 2015 after that it has been taken up the culture has been taken up Uh, everywhere uh, in india and it is successfully it is going and when there is alternate you have a problem of disease we suggest that uh, there is a cycle uh, change and uh, it, it should uh, uh, do a fish culture and this one and also uh, we are reaching out the farmers uh, with uh, uh, different uh, app uh, or mobile based applications where uh, we have a venamai app in our uh, uh indian uh, institute our icr uh, we have a venami app where we are connecting to uh, at least 4000 farmers and uh, so many uh, uh, help we are giving instantly whatever problem they have then other than that we have uh, we are working on the ecosystem based farming uh, system they are uh, the bioflock uh, based uh, zero water exchange system and uh, zero effluent system the recirculatory aquaculture system the aquaponics and the biomimicry and the organic aquaculture we have uh, certain uh, uh, like uh, we have already placed uh, guideline and some research output and uh, we are looking forward but only limitation here is that uh, as we are also concerned about the animal welfare 
the productivity also should be reduced or should be uh, at a, a lower level way, which is not taken instantly by uh, the farmers, but slowly it is getting a lot of attention. Then integrated multi-traffic uh, system, rice integrated prawn system, these are all ecosystem based farming. This is one small uh, uh, example of just to show what is that research aspect we have done uh, uh, with the organic uh, stream farming. We have seen the productivity is improving. The FCR is uh, reducing uh, with organic uh, concept and the uh, market, they get the premium price, uh, 30 to 100 percent price premium with the cost, uh, cost of production also reduces with the low uh, stocking density and this one. And uh, this is again the bioflock based farming. As you know, this is uh, the is a consortium uh, of uh, particulate matter predominantly by the biota of aerobic or heterotrophic bacteria, protozoa, microalgae, and uh, other uh, uh, aspects. Here, this is a stress free environment, and the natural probiotic effect of this bioflock is definitely give a lot of immune boosting uh, to the animal. So, at least uh, during the nursery phase. This is a very good practice. Many farmers are adopting the bioflock based nursery. And uh, we are uh, also uh, looking for uh, the bioflock uh, uh, based uh, nursery and grow out system in different parts of India. And uh, we are uh, also uh, standardizing the protein, the reduction in the protein, the carbohydrates, uh, the input standardization in the bioflock. We have done a lot of uh, research wise. We have done a lot of things on these all these eco based farming system. Then the uh, major aspect of the climate change uh, uh, resilience and uh, uh, this is uh, what the climate smart aquaculture we are uh, looking for and the systemic approach the at farm level at value chain level at environmental uh, footprint. Uh, we are looking for how the uh, water footprint uh, can be reduced uh, through the uh, following the climate smart aquaculture practices. So what are the uh, challenges we know now and uh, what are the uh, um, uh, how uh, for the resilient uh, shrimp industry? What all things can be done uh, uh, which can uh, always uh, make this industry more robust and uh, we can this uh, phenomenal uh, uh, increase phenomenal growth will continue. So this is uh, like first uh, thing is improved uh, biosecurity and evolving uh, better management practices. So it is uh, evolving at uh, like the uh, site specific, the location specific BMPs. Uh, some location we have very high salinity and uh, some location we have low salinity. So and uh, the uh, rainy season and the winter and non winter like that uh, many uh, things and the better management practices should be uh, defined as per that local specific location specific uh, BMPs. Then more genetics and selective stock. We are looking for more resistant line and uh, specific uh, tolerant uh, uh, disease uh, tolerant varieties, especially the ESP tolerant variety. The SPF integrity, the SPF polycate uh, production and uh, formulated feed, the Artemia and uh, all these things uh, we are uh, uh, the industry as well as uh, are going forward with this uh, this concept and uh, new new uh, plants with uh, SPF uh, polycate with formulated feed. Almost all companies, uh, feed companies uh, which are uh, in India, uh, they are coming out with uh, formulated feed. And uh, the nursery integration that as we talk, the nursery uh, phase, if it is uh, done in an intensive way in, with a like ICU, it helps. And with this uh, again, new concept of bioflock based nursery and other thing, it is uh, getting a more uh, uh, refined scientifically. And then ESP WFD uh, biosecurity protocol to be revised, the flocculation filtration treatment, the, the science part of uh, that is improving and it is being uh, uh, the, the farmers are reaching out to do all scientific way the farming system and uh, effective microbes. The aeration, the functional uh, feed, the automation and all these aspects uh, is uh, we are going ahead and this will only uh, had to be resolved to have a resilient uh, shrimp industry. The ETP and no direct discharge that is almost uh, followed and by the uh, CA coast and our coastal aquaculture authority. They are following uh, that one. Anybody they give permission with all these things and uh, zero tolerance for antibiotics. There is uh, uh, no issue with that and everybody almost they have converted to probiotic based farming here. And uh, the, when now with this COVID and all these things, there is only one health approach when we talk of uh, the animal environment human. So we are looking for that natural immunity, how to increase with uh, by integrating the quality inputs and uh, getting uh, uh, high health animals uh, in the production system. 
and the uh, scientific industrial policy, the uh, whatever the kind of uh, the crop holidays or the stocking pattern or the domestic market, all these issues are uh, coming up uh, for a big uh, country wide uh, discussion and all we are uh, our effort is to provide the quality protein uh, to uh, the entire population and in that regard we are doing a lot uh, to have a resilient uh, and uh, more resilient uh, shrimp industry and these are our uh, some of our publications uh, this last uh, uh, last one two year and uh, thank you so much uh, for your present hearing and uh, looking forward to again uh, interaction uh, whatever we can have here thank you so much for the organizers and uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to speak uh, to present before you uh, whatever our points from indian perspective thank you so much